Hey everyone, this is gonna be the next video in my Motivic Development video series. In this video, I will teach you a powerful Motivic Development technique called displacement. Like I said, this video is a part of a series, and before watching it, I highly recommend you check out the other videos in the series, or at least check out the Introduction to Motivic Development video, and I'll leave the annotation up on the screen somewhere. So motivic development is an exciting topic for me because that's what turns your improvisations into language and stories. It adds narrative to your playing and adds a storyline to your improvisations. Today we're going to learn a technique called displacement. Like always, first let me tell you what displacement means and then I'm going to show you what it sounds like and how to practice it. Rhythmic displacement. Rhythmic displacement occurs when the rhythm of a previous motif is repeated but starting on a different beat than the previous motif. For example, if the original motif begins on the first downbeat of the measure, the development or displacement of it would start on the second, third or fourth downbeat of a measure and then repeat the rhythm of the first motif exactly. Or in simple words, you play a phrase and then you play the same rhythm of that phrase starting in a different place in a bar. If your motif started on beat one, for example, then you take the rhythm of that motif and start it from beat three or beat two or beat four. You essentially displace the rhythm of the original motif that you played. Now, my examples will all start on beat one just to make it really easy and understandable for you guys. Some places in the bar are easier to displace to, some are harder and I will show you all of them, starting from the easy, going to the harder and harder and harder. So here's my first example of rhythmic displacement. I'm gonna play a motif and start it on beat one, then I'm gonna rest, and then I will displace the motif by two beats and repeat the same rhythm of that motif with different notes starting on beat three. And that will be the rhythmic displacement of the motif. And it sounds a little something like this. So did you see what I did? I started the motif on beat one and then I kept the same rhythm of the motif and displaced it, starting it on beat three the next time I play it. Here's another example. I'm going to play a motif starting on beat one, then I'm going to rest and then I will repeat the rhythm of that motif starting on beat two, essentially displacing the rhythm by one beat. And it sounds a little something like this. Again, I did the same thing. I played a motif, I rusted, and I repeated the rhythm of that motif with different notes, starting on a different beat. I essentially displaced the rhythm. Here's another example. I'm gonna start the motif on beat one, rest, and displace it by three beats, essentially repeating that rhythm again, but starting on beat four this time. And it sounds a little something like this. Okay, so that's the easy stuff. Now let's look at some harder displacement spots in the bar. And those might give you a head trip for a second, but they are really powerful and they really train your brain to come up with rhythms it would have never came up with otherwise. So I highly recommend doing the complex ones as well. In the next example, I'm gonna play a motif, 
I'm gonna rest. And then I will displace the rhythm of that motif with new notes by half a beat. In other words, the original motif started on beat one and the displacement will start on beat one end. I am essentially displacing the motif by an eighth note. And that's a little harder than displacing it by a quarter note or two quarter notes or three quarter notes because it's gonna start sounding like an entirely different rhythm. But in reality, it's not. It's the exact same rhythm of the first motif. It's just displaced funny. It's displaced by an eighth note. And it sounds a little something like this. So did you see what I did? I did exactly what I've been doing throughout this entire video, but I displaced the rhythm of the first motif by an eighth note instead of a quarter note, or two quarter notes, or three. In the next example, I'm going to displace my rhythm by three eighth notes, by a quarter note and a half. So the original motif will start on beat one, and the development will start on beat two end. I'm displacing the rhythm by three eighth notes, by a quarter note and a half. A little trippy, I know. But check it out. In the next example, I'm going to do the same thing and displace the motif by two and a half beats, by five eighth notes. So the motif starts on beat one and the development will happen on beat three end. And it sounds like this. In the last example, I'm going to displace the rhythm from beat one to beat four end. And here's what that sounds like. And I know this is really messing with your brain and it doesn't even sound like the original rhythm anymore. But if you look at the sheet music examples I provide in the video, you will see that it's actually exactly the same rhythm. It's just displaced in a really funny way. Now, why is this good? Why is this good to practice? Well, a couple of reasons. First, it's a really sophisticated way to develop your motifs, right? It's a really profound way of referencing what you had already said in a new way and recontextualizing the material you've already played, which is what motivic development is in principle. The other benefit of practicing this is that it really opens your mind and opens your instincts for new rhythmic possibilities. Let's face it, some of these rhythms I've been playing, I would have never came up with on my own had I not decided to start displacing my original motif in the most crazy ways I could imagine. And by doing that, I came up with new kinds of rhythms and phrasings that I would have never otherwise played in my improvisations. And now there's a pathway in my brain 
to playing these new funny rhythms and phrasing in these ways. And this is how I battle my own rhythmic habits of playing the same rhythms all the time and phrasing the same square way all the time, which I know all of us deal with and are trying to overcome. So that's another benefit of practicing this technique. That's about it, you guys. And please let me know if you have any questions or requests. I answer everyone's comments and coach you guys on how to practice this material in most efficient ways so that you could get the most out of it. If you like the video, please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, hit that notification bell so that every time I make these videos, you'll be the first one to know about them. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.